I'm going to read through Still I Rise by Maya Angelou. This is in preparation for your Edexcel IGCSE English Language Exam, Paper 2. As always, these are just some of my thoughts uh, after reading the poem. I strongly suggest that you read through the poem at least twice and seriously consider what you take from the poem, what you think the message is. Um, before you read anyone else's interpretation, it's really important to get those top marks that you are providing original ideas rather than just regurgitating others. OK, so when I look at the title, Still I Rise, I think about what's in the poem as a whole. Um, so I interpret despite, uh, sorry, still, uh, meaning despite. So despite um, the poor treatment I receive from living in a racist society, despite my ancestors being slaves, despite being misrepresented in history books and in the media. So we learn that the speaker, and I believe the speaker is Angelo herself, um, has faced many, many challenges in their life. And despite all of that, they rise above it. Now with the word rise, I believe there are a number of um, meanings here. One, I think it connotes to progress, so just this idea of becoming a better person and becoming a stronger person uh, throughout life. Um, they rise to the challenge, so they're showing resilience. Um, but for me personally, I think the strongest message that I can um, relate to is this feeling of moral superiority. So regardless of the way you treat me, um, regardless of the hate fueled actions that I receive from you, I will be better. I will rise above that and I will be a better person. Remember to think about your own interpretations as well. You may write me down in history with your bitter, twisted lies. You may trod me in the very dirt, but still, like dust, I'll rise. Um, so straight away, think about who is you? So the direct address creates this confrontational tone. I'd argue, considering um, the fact that black slavery is alluded to later on in the poem, I would argue that you is the, the white oppressor. Um, and look at the modal verb may. Um, I think this is a reminder that um, of the power of the oppressor. They can do these things. They might even get away with doing these things. So you can do all these things to me, but it's not going to stop me. I'm still going to continue. Um, and the obviously we've got anaphora here. We'll see that used later on as well. So that just reiterates the power of the oppressor, the reminder of um, the capabilities of the oppressor. Um, so who is me? Uh, me could be Angelo herself. It could be the black community. It could be her ancestors. It could be black women as well. We'll look at one stanza in particular that really focuses on um, kind of a, a feminist argument. Now, please keep in mind, however, that this, there could be a universal message here. Um, there's definitely clear references to anti-black racism throughout this poem. But there's also a universal message to take from this. If you are the recipient of bullying, um, of ageism, of sexism, of homophobia, you can rise above that. You can be resilient and fight through and make sure that that doesn't stop you or hold you back. So there's certainly a universal message to take. So keep that in mind. Um, look at the harsh consonant sound in the b, the t, and the d. Um, in these two words here, bitter, twisted, as well as the sharp i sound in the assonance, bitter, twisted. Um, so the, just the harshness of that really draws our focus to this idea of this misrepresentation. So writing um, down in history lies. Now that can refer to the, the representation of um, the black community in the history books written by pr predominantly white men. Um, it could be about the misrepresentation of women um, especially black women. Um, so, but also thinking as well, linking this to modern day media, the misrepresentation of certain communities. And again, this can be universal 
think about in the communities that you live in is are there certain communities that are um, treated like a scapegoat and are misrepresented um, to encourage hatred towards them um, look at the harsh verb trod so this is a metaphor to really um, emphasize the harm intended by this poor treatment but also the um, the hope to overpower a community to really kind of trod them down in dirt really means to keep them low to keep their um, self-perception as well um, low to ensure that they don't rise in society but of course Angelo really turns that around because like dust she will rise so linking herself to nature suggests that it's within her it's within her very nature to rise there's no there's there's no way she can be held back um, by a racist community um, and then I would refer to I'll rise as a mantra we see it all the way through um, it's this defiant tone it's also a really positive tone what could have happened in this poem is it could have just been overwhelmingly bitter and angry but I think coming back to this mantra of I'll rise makes it much more inspiring um, for others because we have that positive tone underlying throughout um, this wasn't one of my own ideas this is something I read um, I don't know the bible that well so I wouldn't have been able to come up with this myself um, but this is um, according to someone else's interpretation an allusion to the bible or it could be read in that way in the bible it states that God created humans um, from the dust and in death they return to the dust um, so is this a reminder that um, we are created equally by God is this Angelo asserting her humanity and reminding the oppressor I am equal to you we were created by the same God does my sassiness upset you why are you beset with gloom because I walk like I've got oil wells pumping in my living room so we have this really bold and confident tone in this stanza um, but also with the rhetorical questions, which we'll, we'll, we will see later on in the poem used again. Um, she's being really antagonistic and sarcastic here. Uh, she's really kind of pushing the buttons, if you like, of the white oppressor and trying to upset them with her confidence. Um, she refers to her walk, which you might argue the way you walk is an indicator of your self-image and your confidence. And she walks using the simile like she's got oil wells in her um, living room. So oil is um, a symbol of immense wealth. So she's suggesting that her confidence is her wealth. And the personal possessive pronoun of my living room uh, suggests that that confident confidence comes from her, from within. She hasn't looked to anyone else to give her almost permission to feel good about herself. That's come from within. So here we've got this message really about self-empowerment. Don't look to others to make you feel good about yourself find it from within and that's the strongest kind of confidence that no one can defeat just like moons and like suns with the certainty of tides just like hope springing high still I'll rise so again we have these similes that link Angelo to nature she is a force of nature unstoppable unstoppable like the moon like the sun and like the tide so we have this great sense again of power um, and we have this personification as well of hope springing high it just creates this wonderful image um, of her confidence her hope really being full of vi vigor and energy and being incredibly difficult again to defeat so everything that we see at the moment is this reinforced idea of self-empowerment nothing can stop Angelo did you want to see me broken, bowed head and lowered eyes, shoulders falling down like teardrops, weakened by my soulful cry? So this stanza really focuses on the desires of the white oppressor. And the desire is to really shatter the black community's self-image. Okay, And so what we really see here, by Angelo showing that she is confident, and we will later see that she is happy, um, and that she loves herself, they become a rebellious act within a racist society and just 
seeing it in that way, seeing it as a, a kind of rebellious act, highlights how ridiculous it is, how ridiculous is a racist society for it to be rebellious, to be happy, to love oneself. Um, so we have these images of shame, sadness and weakness, broken, bowed head, lowered eyes, shoulders falling down like teardrops. Look at that simile. The soulful cry, so cries, sadness that's deep within, if you f um, focus on the word soulful. Um, and again, we've got the rhetorical question. So she's continually kind of antagonizing this white suppressor, uh, so, well, sorry, white oppressor. Um, but you could also argue, are these really rhetorical questions or are they really accusations? Because she's really saying, you want to see me broken. You want to see my head bowed down, but that's not going to happen. I'll rise. Does my haughtiness offend you? Don't you take it awful hard? Because I laugh like I've got gold mines digging in my own backyard. So we've got this real kind of mocking tone, this sarcasm again. Um, she's she's making the oppressor making the intended audience seem pathetic oh don't get so sad are you sad that i'm so happy that i'm so bold that i'm so confident um and again she's focusing she focused initially on her walk now she's focusing on her laugh an indicator of happiness um, and it really contrasts to the previous stanza, which had these image, if you recall, these images of shame, sadness and weakness. But we've instead got this really happy individual, so happy that you would assume she's got gold mines in her own backyard. And again, that simile, again, is a symbol of wealth. Um, her happiness comes from within. Again, we've got her own backyard. She's not getting this happiness from anyone else but herself. So again, it's this idea of self-empowerment. You may shoot me with your words. You may cut me with your eyes. You may kill me with your hatefulness. But still, like air, I'll rise. So we've got that anaphora that we saw in the first stanza. You may, you may, you may. Again, this um, reminder of the power of the oppressor, the power of the bully, the the power of the homophobe and it, and so on they have free will they can think these things um, they can choose to treat people poorly but she's not going to let it affect her um, look at the violent verbs used in this stanza shoot cut kill they can be seen as metaphorical but you could certainly see this also um, as literal okay being in a racist society can be dangerous it can physically harm you um, as well as metaphorically so you could certainly link that um, in two ways she again links herself to a natural element okay air and again just it's so natural for her to rise above this 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 self-empowerment this self-belief uh, but she's ele elevated herself from dust in the first stanza she referred to herself like dust now she's saying like air so even just thinking about the image of dust still being close to the ground throughout this poem she has elevated herself and that represents her self-confidence her self-belief and um sorry i forgot to mention the listing here so we've got the anaphora these are the lists and there's this creates this sense of relentlessness living in a ra racist society means you face this poor treatment over and over again so you get a feel for the pressure that is on oneself that um that experiences racism and again she breaks that list by saying at the end of the stanza she'll rise so she'll break it it doesn't matter does my sexiness upset you? Does it come as a surprise that I dance like I've got diamonds at the meeting of my thighs? So here you could argue this stanza really links with um, feminism and it can be misread as something vulgar and it's really not. She's really saying that she takes value from being a woman, not in spite of being a woman. Her value is derived from being a woman. Um, so again, she's using rhetorical questions, she's antagonizing them, and she's really thinking about the expectations of women. Are women supposed to be coy, unlike men who are allowed to be these sexual beings, and it's frowned upon for a woman to show sexual freedom? She's really uh, challenging that concept. Okay, Why are you so upset with my sexiness when we don't have that same reaction when we see that within men? Um, 
And the dance here is an indicator of freedom and happiness again. Um, and diamonds not only re refers to or is linked to wealth, but also beauty. So she's celebrating herself as a woman and saying, my great value, just like diamonds, my great value comes from the meeting of my thighs. And what she really means there is my great value comes from being a woman. Um, and you might say this is elevated, this self-empowerment. We had living room, we had backyard, and now we have the meeting of her thighs. So it's becoming much more intimate. Um, and you can say her value and her worth is coming from within. Okay. Um, out of the huts of history's shame, I rise. Up from a past that's rooted in pain, I rise. I'm a black ocean, leaping and wide. Welling and swelling, I bear in the tide. We'll talk about the change in the stanza length and the uh, rhyme scheme later. Uh, but looking at some of the techniques used, look at the alliteration and sibilance on the first line. They create a hush sound. So we've got the h, the s, and the sh sound. So it creates that hushed sound, which is linked with fear. So it's a reminder of, uh, and, and definitely with, with the word hut, hut and history of shame, we've got um, a reference, a clear reference to slavery. It's a reminder of the fear that slaves lived through day in, day out. Um, but she's risen from that. She's not allowing her past to define her. And so she rises from that past that's rooted in pain. So again, look at the word rooted, the verb rooted. It's deeply embedded within. This isn't something you get over easily. This fear, this pain, this sadness over the treatment of black slaves. It's something that's carried within the black community. Um, but she's going to rise above it. She's going to not let it define her. She's going to become a better person because of it. And then we get this real sense of strength with the metaphor, I'm a black ocean. Think about previously, she always used similes. I'm like dust, I'm like air. Um, but now she's saying, I am a black ocean. So there's something again that's growing in confidence in this poem. She is rising in this poem. Um, also to note, linked with that is previously, if you notice, in all the stanzas, she says, I'll rise, the future tense, now it's present. So there's an idea that maybe um, when she struggled, she always thought, I will rise, I'll get better, I'll get over this. And a suggestion at this point in this poem, she is over it, she is rising. Um, so you can play with that idea as well um, and think about how you interpret it. Um, think about the properties of an ocean. It's wild, it's free, it's strong. Again, it's a force of nature not to be reckoned with. Um, she doesn't just say she's an ocean, she's a black ocean. Her power, um, you might argue, comes from her blackness, not in spite of it. So there's a real celebration here, a celebratory tone of being black. Previously, we saw that with her womanhood, her femininity, okay? So this idea again that she's saying, I'm not powerful and wonderful in spite of being a woman, in spite of being black. I'm wonderful and powerful because of these things. That's where my power and my self-worth is um, derives from. Uh, look at the verb leaping, the, dis the adjective wide. She's full of vigor. She's vast. Um, the internal rhyme creates this fluid motion of the, the ocean welling and swelling. And it just emphasizes the strength um, that she has um, the the way she can how can I explain this I've gone a little bit blank here um, the way she can control things in her life maybe around her the way she can inspire is like how the ocean controls its environment um, she's feeling that type of power and that type of influence as well in her community. I bear in the tide. You might link this. I read this, so this wasn't my own idea. Um, she is a political, or she was, I should say, sorry, um, a political activist. Um, and so does bearing in the tide, is that really about linked to her social movements, that she supported the civil rights movement, feminist movements? Um, so is it a metaphor for the, the waves 
that she has created in the society, um, the revolutions that she has um, encouraged for, for social change. Leaving behind nights of terror and fear, I rise. Into a daybreak that's wondrously clear, I rise. Bringing the gifts that my ancestors gave. I am the dream and the hope of the slave. I rise, I rise, I rise. So a really strong ending. We have this um, great contrast of the past to the present. So she's talking about a past that was filled with nights of terror and fear, and you can certainly link that to slavery. But she rises above that, again, doesn't allow it to determine her life. And we have daybreak, so imagery of um, this contrast of night versus day, symbolizing kind of this life filled with terror um, with now a life of hope. Um, interestingly we've got the alliteration here of the g gifts that my ancestors gave so again this reinforcement of this idea that her strength derives from the resilience of her ancestors again i am strong because of the past not despite it uh, but the, also this great gratitude as well to her ancestors for fighting on she's taken that power um from them she's inherited it so she's got real great pride in her heritage and then we have the refrain I rise I rise I rise so she's continually progressing and overcoming barriers of the racist society um, hence the repetition um, and she sees herself I am the dream and the and the hope of the slave she sees herself as she writes this as the embodiment of of their wishes the declarative sentence progresses from the similes from before um, again to show that confidence um, in the uh, she's growing in confidence as this poem progresses so looking at some are uh, some structural features we've already talked about quite a few um, you should note that there are seven quatrains, four line stanzas, one sestet, that's a six line stanza, and then a one nine line stanza. There might be a word for a nine line stanza, I just didn't know it. Um, please feel free to write it in the comment if you do. Um, the shift in stanza length, what do you think that might represent? Personally, um, I think it might mirror the unexpected reaction of Angelo. So... Angelo lives in a racist society. She's very much aware that many people within that society look at her and underestimate her. They think, um, they think that she is less than them. So has she in her life, with all her successes, this is a woman who has achieved so much um, in her literary career, acting, and so on. Um, is she unexpected? So does it, it, does it mirror her life that she has, um, that she has been underestimated by this racist society and she has surprised them with how intelligent she is, how, how um, successful she has been? That's one idea. Um, the other maybe is this refusal to conform to black stereotypes or this refusal to give in. So do the first... Um, to the seven quatrains because of their kind of rigidity and their um, predictability, their strictness. Does that kind of represent um, the limits placed upon a black community within that um, in a racist society? And is she showing by kind of breaking free from that and creating that sester and that nine line stanza? Is that a representation of her breaking free of those confines? Um, and her refusal to conform to black stereotypes. Those are some ideas. There's definitely more out there, I'm sure. Please think for yourself and feel free to share in the comment section. Uh, from stanza eight, um, she no longer addresses the oppressor. She becomes much more assertive as well. Uh, so before that, she was using similes, and then she turns to metaphors and declarative sentences. Um, so I would argue there's just this gain in confidence within this poem. She becomes much more self-assured. Um, she no longer has to address the oppressor. Who cares? They're not important. And she's just really focusing on herself and her past and celebrating who she is uh, and what she stands for. 
There's also a shift in rhyme scheme. So with, with the seven quatrains, we have A, B, C, B. And then with the sestet, we have A, B, A, B, C, C. And then finally, A, B, A, B, C, C, A, A, A. I would argue that helps build towards the climax of the poem and mirrors the confidence gained within this poem, which might mirror her life. Maybe she, as she um, grew, she grew in confidence and became much more self-assured later in life. Um, feel free to share your own interpretations. I do love reading um, your own interpretations and often share them with my own class. So um, feel free to share what you think. You do not have to agree with anything I wrote here.